военная приемка, программа о самом современном российском оружии. Вот сегодня главный герой нашей программы – машина, которая, как никакая другая, поставила бесчисленное количество рекордов. Аппарат, которому нет равных в мире. Сегодня мы это докажем. Для этого у меня есть модель вертолета Ми-24, есть сам тяжелый вертолет Ми-24. Наша задача – вот эту тяжелую машину с ювелирной точностью разместить здесь, в центре нашей звезды. Ну, кто справится с такой задачей? Конечно, он красавец, самый большой, самый мощный вертолет в России – в мире. Итак, мы начинаем наш эксперимент. Запускаем винты. И буквально через несколько секунд эта махина как плоху перенесет в центр звезды наш маленький Ми-24. When pilots describe the Mi-26, they mostly use the word unique. And they are right. There is no helicopter in the world like this one. The Mi-26 has been in service for 40 years, and no one has ever managed to create a heavier mass-produced helicopter. Moreover, no other mass-produced helicopter has ever beaten its record for cargo and passenger capacity. That said, the Mi-26 is still a fast and agile aircraft. Who would have thought that this behemoth could do such tricks in the sky? Its NATO reporting name is Halo. Rest assured, no one will manage to outshine it in the foreseeable future. Mi-26, a flight to the star. First of all, Mi-26 is not just a big helicopter. It's very big. No other helicopter in the world has such a cargo compartment. 39 by 10 feet. It is probably bigger than your living room. To clarify, it can fit a whole year old truck. If we refurnish Mi-26 into a hospital, this flying ambulance will then have enough space for 60 stretchers. And even more for the medics. In troop carrying mode, it can fit 82 soldiers equipped with armored vests, rifles, and parachutes. That's an entire company and each one of them will have a seat, a folding one, but nevertheless. So, 82 people take their seats, and we can see that this isn't the limit. Moreover, our behemoth even has an entry in the Guinness World Book of Records. On November 27, 1996, 224 people crammed into a Mi-26, plus the crew. That was the most people that ever jumped off a single aircraft. However, we need to clarify. The Mi-26 isn't the largest helicopter in history. The V-12, aka Mi-12, was almost twice as big. A real monster with a max takeoff weight of 231,000 pounds. In 1969, this beast lifted 97,000 pounds to a height of 7,400 feet. This is the world capacity record, which remains unbroken. But there were only two of these machines built, and the project ground to a halt. Meanwhile, the Mi-26 went into mass production and started setting one record after another, and not just in Russia, but all over the world. Thus, the Mi-26 has become the only one in the world in its weight class. Now it's time for us to challenge this champion. Today, Combat Approved will test its abilities like no one has ever before. Combat Approved. First, we mow down the grass. Then we draw out some lines. Only after that can we start painting by hand. It took almost 24 hours for the film crew of Combat Approved to draw this big red star. We painted this red star at this scale for a good reason. It'll become the most important part of today's main experiment. Another important detail is the location. 
Tarshok, Fair region. What appears to be a simple airfield in the midst of Russian swamps is in fact the Army Aviation Airborne Personnel Combat and Transition Training Center. This place is famous among all military helicopter pilots in the world. Our military aces learn here to master their helicopters. For your information, the pilots from the center fly helicopters over Red Square during the Victory Day Parade. The famous Golden Eagles are also from Tarzhok. Needless to say, only the most skillful pilots come to this helicopter university. Here, they perfect their mastery not only in light attack helicopters, but also on the big flying houses, such as the Mi-26. The location of the setup is the red star in the field. It's not just a landing site. It's far more complicated. Today, in front of your own eyes, we are going to recreate the legendary first insignia of the 344th Combat and Transition Training Center. Here's the original sleeve patch, a Mi-24 in the middle of a red five-pointed star. We want to do the same with a real helicopter. This will be a serious challenge for the Mi-26 crew. The pilots would have to gently lift an unprepared combat aircraft, transport it, and put it on the ground with pinpoint accuracy. I remind you, the Mi-24 was not prepared for transportation in any way. So, is our headliner able to handle such a burden? After all, it's like walking on a tightrope over an abyss. A slight mistake will damage the combat helicopter. We cannot allow that to happen. If the wire rope is too long, the shipment will swing and both helicopters might crash. If the wire rope is too short, the shipment will spin due to the air vortex caused by the huge rotor of our headliner. Its diameter is 105 feet, almost like a nine-story apartment building. During flight, this rotor creates hurricane-like winds, especially in the maximum power mode. The question arises, how can the Mi-26 lift such a huge amount in the first place? After all, only transport planes can carry such loads. In the airport, there are two turbofan engines, D-136, which are also the most powerful in the class of turbofan engines, which are in the airport. This engine was made on the basis of the aircraft engine D-36, which was installed on the aircraft Yak-42 and An-72. The Mi-26 has up to two of these engines, each with 11,400 horsepower. That is also a record. As a matter of fact, the design of the Mi-26 has a lot of fantastic and record-breaking elements. For instance, there's the reducing gearbox, a power plant designed to transfer torque from the engine to the rotor. Это самый мощный трансмиссионный агрегат, который когда-либо устанавливался на воздушных судах. Высота его 3 метра, общий вес 3,5 тонны, 200 литров масла, 
и передаваемая мощность от двух турбовальных двигателей свыше 22 тысяч лошадиных сил. It's no wonder that this helicopter can easily lift 44,000 pounds. When I say easily, I really mean it. We have already transported a helicopter on a helicopter once before. However, our behemoth had many other such records. It has carried a bulldozer on a wire, an aircraft hull, and an entire airplane. Here, the Mi-26 is carrying a commercial Tu-134, which weighs a record 44,000 pounds. And this flight is a record for our show. The heaviest helicopter in the world carries the largest helicopter in the world. This shipment weighs about 35,000 pounds. We should clarify that the record maximum load of 44,000 pounds is only the calculated maximum. In fact, the Mi-26 can carry more. In 1982, it set a record for mass-produced helicopters after lifting 55,000 pounds at more than 13,000 feet above sea level. The weight of our shipment, the Mi-24, is just 18,000 pounds. It wouldn't seem challenging if it wasn't for some slight problems. First of all, we don't just need to transport a shipment from point A to point B. We need to place the helicopter into the center of the star with pinpoint accuracy. A seven inch margin of error would ruin the picture. Secondly, take another look at how the Mi-26 usually carries helicopters. Either the engines or the rotors are detached, or sometimes even both. And it's not only about losing weight, it's about safety. Meanwhile, our cargo was not prepared at all. The engines and rotor are installed. You could fly it right away. The rotor is another problem. Airborne behemoth is hovering over its future cargo. The rotor blades are making a hurricane wind. It becomes clear only at this point, you'll need a special rotor to hold a 77,000 pound helicopter with a 44,000 pound cargo. We've already mentioned the diameter. Another feature is the eight blade rotor, which is more than most helicopters have. That's another record. I'll repeat. There's no other helicopter in the world with more blades on its single main rotor. Лопасти для самого большого вертолета в мире представляют собой лопасти со смешанной конструкции. Состоят из цельнометаллического стального лонжерона из высоколегированной стали, который подвергается различным обработкам. После прохождения всех этапов механической обработки лонжерон подвергается упрочнению внутренней и наружной поверхности. 
Наружная поверхность упрощается при помощи ротационного наклепа. Внутренняя поверхность упрощается э, гидродробеструйным наклепом. Usually the blades are made as light as possible, but the V26 has a different rule because the framework should withstand extreme stress loads. Длина лопасти составляет 14,5 метров. Масса лопасти около 400 килограмм, что обеспечивает подъемную силу самого грузоподъемного и большого вертолета в мире. harder and harder to stand in place. This wind is capable of throwing a man away like a toy. However, the blades still hold. Meanwhile, the Mi-26 is still descending. It took about several minutes. It's amazing how this giant descends precisely upright and doesn't even strafe to the side. It takes great skill to hold a helicopter like that. Длина троса составит 20 метров. А почему не 15, если мы пятнашку нормально отработаем? Мы берем 5 метров еще на запас на верплюк, для того, чтобы это все выполнить безопасно. Поэтому с высоты 20 метров данный вертолет в воздухе будет вести себя правильно, аккуратно, без вращений, сильных. To tell the truth, the pilots conducting today's operation have already done similar tasks several times. They say that the hardest case in their experience was to evacuate a Mi-8, which crashed in the highlands near Mount Elbrus. A military Mi-8 AMTSH crashed on the side of Mount Elbrus in summer 2010. It fell near a path that the Alpinists used to ascend. In the end, the decision was to move the crashed helicopter away from the mountain. But no one has ever conducted such operations at such altitudes. The air on Mount Elbrus is so thin that it is hard to breathe. Never mind to keep a helicopter in the air. Вертолет лежал на высоте 4820. Соответственно, для полета в этом районе надо было держать высоту 5 километров 5100 метров. Vladimir Khorev is a test pilot out of the Rostvertol plant. He was the commander of the crew that flew the rescue helicopter. Today, he's sharing all the details. But back then, the operation was classified. It's all on the edge of the hole, so don't give a small mistake and put another car there on the bus. No one needs it. The service ceiling of the Mi-26 is 21,000 feet when empty. Back on Elbrus, there was cargo and thin mountain air, all topped with gusting and volatile winds. In such conditions, the Mi-8 seemed to be an unliftable load. Для того чтобы эвакуировать Mi-8, который весит пустой в районе 7-8 тонн, именно такой груз вертолет на этой высоте не может поднять. Поэтому было принято решение. Разобрать вертолет, демонтировать двигатели, демонтировать редуктор вот, и уже частями э, вывозить его оттуда. Ну, скажем так, между нами спина была мокрая, вот, когда ими, именно вот, вот, вот в этот период работы. Вот, потому, потому что при, 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 приходилось парировать э, все те э, накоренения, тангажи, те, которые воздействуют на вертолет. Плюс еще, конечно, то, что Горизонт у меня проектировался в виде склона горы Эльбрус. Вот. Он свою корректиру вносил э, в, в голову. However, 
you should understand that a single wrong move of the controller can cost the lives of the entire crew. If the crew of the Mi-8 had hit the rocks, the hull would have become an anchor for the airborne giant. This would have led to a catastrophic result. We managed to raise the gruz on 2-3 meters. I made the decision to go to the ground, on the ground. So, in this way, I brought the gruz to the most difficult zone where we were. And then, the speed increased, and the energy of the aircraft also increased. And we left the fuselage on the high speed on the high speed. The Mi-8 was destroyed by the Mi-8. As it turned out later, it only took seven minutes to do that. Likewise, we have been preparing for this two to three minute flight for several days. During our experiment in Tarjok, we have hooked the Mi-24 with a single wire rope, just like they did it on Mount Elbrus. this very clamp to lift up the helicopter. It would seem that everything is ready to start lifting. But just to be sure, the pilots of the Mi-26 double check the length of the rope, which will be used to transport the combat helicopter. I came up with an idea to put up this umbrella to show the strength of the airflow towards the ground. But why test an umbrella when even people can barely stand here? Nevertheless, I can hardly hold this umbrella straight. The air doesn't just blow down from above, but is spinning as well, trying to pull it out of my hands. Another of our headliner's records is the ability to cover long distances on one tank. It seems that the Mi-26 would consume a huge amount of fuel, given its powerful engines and the rotor diameter. But the Mi-26, surprisingly, has a greater range than many other helicopters. We have общем объемом 8,000 liters. Еще 4000 литров наверху расходных баков. Данный объем топлива обеспечивает практическую дальность полета до 800 километров при максимальной заправке топлива. А при установке дополнительных четырех баков в грузовой кабине обеспечивается практическая дальность до 2000 километров. For a helicopter this big, a range of 1200 miles is also a record. Please note another feature of the lift. The Mi-26 isn't hovering exactly over the helicopter, but a little to the side. Once again, our umbrella can't withstand the airflow. It's really hard to hold it, as though we are inside a hurricane. The wind speed feels like it's 60 miles per hour. At this moment, you can relate to people who have survived a storm. 
However, it's not that scary inside the gale under the helicopter. Even the oversensitive microphones can't hear in this noise. But nothing is compared to the wind. What matters most is to remain standing when a Mi-26 is hovering over you. We can only wonder at the endurance of the engineers. These men have a job to do in such conditions. They need to come up and connect the ropes. The engineers don't just have to hook up the rope but also make sure that it won't tangle around the blades of the Mi-24. And here's the liftoff. Look how easily those 19,000 pounds of armor and metal go up in the air but the pilots won't take chances. If they pull the cargo too fast, it'll start to swing and become hard to control. The danger is that both helicopters can crash. Note that the cargo doesn't swing, but is just spinning on the wire rope. This happens because of the airflow created by the blades of the Mi-26, so it can't be countered. Our heroes here are now flying at 164 feet. Accelerated by the wind, the drops turn into projectiles that hit your skin quite painfully. At this point, the Mi-26 generates the most power. It always does during landing and takeoff. Here, our cargo gently touches the ground. Not inside the star for now, but nearby. Thus, we have found out that we can transport even an unprepared helicopter. It's time for us to get ready for the most difficult part. Landing on the star with pinpoint accuracy. Этот ветер ураганный, который он создает, это тоже, наверное, да. своего рода рекорд. Это рекорд. 26 ми. Да, да. Speaking of sizes, our giant with a rotor is often called a flying cow because of its round shape. But if you think that this giant is clumsy due to its mass and size, think again. This footage was also filmed in Tarjog. That's how the pilots prepared for the air show during the Victory Day Parade at Red Square on the 9th of May. Here's a zoom climb with a hook turn performed by the Mi-26. As you can see, it does it at quite a high speed, just like a night hunter or an alligator would. And here, it's flying forwards, except on its side. Does it look like a cow? For the record, it is much more difficult to control than a light helicopter. Imagine the skill a pilot should have to control this giant and make it dance on the spot. Вертолет просто уникальный именно по своим размерам, по своим техническим характеристикам, по возможности его модернизации и так далее. Как бы он ни казался, насколько вот он массивный, огромный, да, но в то же время вертолет очень маневренный. 
They say that it's not the limit, as they are already modernizing the combat machines. They install new avionics that will make controlling them even easier. Moreover, the engineers have already developed a new generation of the Mi-26. На данный момент проводилась макетная комиссия и будет проводиться для Министерства обороны выпуск ну, нового вертолета на базе Ми-26, Ми-26Т-2В. У него будет также четыре члена экипажа, несколько МФИ, будет лазерные инерциальные, инерциальные системы стоять. Ну, то есть более технически продвинутым будет вертолет. То есть этот вертолет изначально заложен такой огромный потенциал, что, я думаю, еще ближайшие там, лет 30 конкурентов просто, в принципе, быть не может. Вертолет постоянно модернизируется, как я уже сказал. Да, есть, соответственно, технический облик вертолета как для Министерства обороны Российской Федерации, так и для иностранных заказчиков. Просто каждый заказчик подъявляет свои требования. Но э, мы слышали от заказчиков только положительный отзыв, потому что это действительно уникальный вертолет. И если вы ну, там, мы знаем, что э, там сегодня уже подписано э, межправ соглашение между Российской Федерацией и Китайской Республикой о создании тяжелого вертолета, потому что Китай, наши китайские коллеги обратились именно к нам, понимая, что у нас есть. The experience is truly unique. Mi-26s were used during the Chernobyl accident. In addition, it helps fighting fires every year. Not just in Russia. It can carry 4,000 gallons of water in the Hello bucket. It was also involved in construction of many sites for the Olympics in Sochi. However, the Mi-26 has the most applications in the Army. For example, Here's footage from the town of Tixi in Yakutia. There are several Mi-26s stationed there at this moment. They deliver cargo to the Arctic base on Katelny Island. This means that the Mi-26, on top of everything else, is able to fly at extremely low temperatures. Speaking of cargo, our experiment in Tarjok is not yet over. The helicopter should be placed not just in the very center of the star, but just like it was placed on the first, already legendary insignia of the 344th Airborne Personnel Combat and Transition Training Center in Tarjok. Just four inches to the side, and the whole picture would be ruined. There it is. However, a problem. As you've already noticed, our cargo is spinning about its axis, which means the crew of the Mi-26 would have to seize the right opportunity to land, all while solving other problems. We're repeating the whole procedure from the beginning, hooking up the wire rope, lifting, transporting, and a gentle landing.
the fact that the pilots themselves don't see the star on the ground makes the task even more difficult. A positive outcome of the experiment depends on teamwork. Right now, the flight engineer and the entire ground team are telling the pilots over the radio where and how far they should strafe. Just a minute of hovering and we've landed. The Mi-24 is on the ground. We've made it. They say promptness is the politeness of kings. If it's true, then we can truly call our military pilots the kings of the sky. Commencing such an operation unprepared is almost a sign of brilliant work. However, without such a machine as the Mi-26, the pilots couldn't even dream of such loads and precision.